Okay, so welcome everybody to the uh, Myths, a bit service Mythbuster talk. Um, my name is Simon Moser. I'm the PM for the uh, incubation project called uh, BitService. And the goal of this talk is really to introduce everybody here in the room and in the community about what the BitService is, what we intend to do, why we do it, and all these kind of things. So we have a, a little agenda that we put together. Um, and we basically divided it up into three pieces. The first piece is we're going to explain to you what the bid service is, why do we think we need it, um, and the second block will be um, something that, uh, what is it that we actually did in the last couple of months, uh, what are the challenges that we faced, what, have, what were the lessons that we actually learned while conducting the project. Um, and then last but not least, um, we're going to explain to you why this might or might not be important for you, so how does it affect you, how would it help you, what are we planning on doing next, and so on and so forth. And we'll conclude with a Q&A, obviously. So let's get started on the bit service. So what is, what is the bit service? So first and foremost, the bit service is a, a true community incubation project um, scoped around bits. Um, right now, we are running uh, as probably one of the very few teams in the Cloud Foundry community that is, that is really truly equally divided um, by members from IBM or by employees from IBM and uh, employees from Pivotal. Um, the, when I say it's scoped around bits, what I really mean by that is um, what, what are bits, when, when I'm talking about this, what is it that I'm talking about? I'm talking about things like application artifacts. I'm talking about compiled droplets. I'm talking about um, um, build packs, uh, packages. And then also, uh, we are talking about um, all of the caching and, and uh, other stuff that's, that's today in the cloud controller related to these kind of artifacts. So in order to make that a little bit more transparent to what that means, um, let, let us explain to you first, where does Cloud Foundry use bits today? And uh, we're going to use the example of pushing an app to set the context for everybody. Hey, my name is Steve, and I work for Pivotal. Um, these are my colleagues from, I, from IBM. Uh, and as Simon just said, um, pushing an app is like one particular use case of a CF, a Cloud Foundry workflow, where bits really matter or blobs matter. And it might be worth like looking behind the curtain on a high level, like what's happening when you do a CF push, when you push your application. And yeah, I don't want to bore you too much, so I kept it like focused on bits here. So there are a couple of pieces missing in this like sequ sequence diagram. Um, but basically the first thing that happens when you type CF push, um, your CLI, which is like that thread on the left side in the sequence diagram that says CF, uh, your CLI will make an HTTP POST request to an endpoint called V2 apps. And that endpoint is served by what we call the cloud controller, or CC. Um, it's like this middle component in the diagram. And that's a pretty important and central component in, in a Cloud Foundry deployment. It's basically the component that serves all of the API endpoints. So whenever you interact with your CF environment, you're most likely going through the cloud controller. Right? So it serves up the API. It also maintains the data model that resembles your particular CF environment. So all the apps, the spaces, the orgs, the services, the service bindings, et cetera, PP, all of that is maintained and stored by the cloud controller. So it does quite a bit. Uh, anyway, let's get back to that post. So the post happens, and the cloud controller creates a bunch of like database entries. Amongst others, there will be a row in a table called apps, and that row resembles your app. Right? And Cloud Controller is going to assign a globally unique ID or GUID to your app, and it's going to pass that back to CLI. And the CLI now has a way to address that app going forward. Um, so the next big piece that happens with regards to bits um, is all about what we call resource matching. And before I tell you what that is, uh, you need to know that um, the Cloud Controller keeps like a global cache of all application artifacts, which means like all the files that your apps consist of. And it keeps such a cache across all orgs and spaces um, where all these files live. So basically that means like every app that has been pushed to your Cloud Foundry environment, all these, 
all these files that these apps consist of, they, they live in this cache, right? They're like unique entries for each file. And why do we have such a cache? Well, like any other cache out there, it prevents us from doing things twice or multiple times. In this case, we want to prevent ourselves from having to upload the same file over and over again, right? And you can think of like having an organization with multiple developers, or like thousands even developers, and they all either push the same app or they push apps that rely on common files. You don't want to upload these files over and over again. And that's why we have that cache. Um, and in order to use that cache, the CLI has to have a way to identify what files are currently in the cache and what files are missing. Because the missing ones, it has to upload, obviously, right? And that process is called resource matching. And to initiate the resource matching, the CLI is going to make a put request. So that's that second uh, arrow that goes from the CF component to CC here. Uh, makes a put request um, to this V2 resource match endpoint and it provides a list of fingerprints. So there will be a fingerprint for each file that your app consists of. And you can think of fingerprints like um, some hashes that basically identify the bits that your file consists of. So an MD5 hash or something like that, right? Um, and that list is being passed on to the cloud controller. And the cloud controller then will check with a third component that we call plop store whether or not uh, a certain file is in the cache. And it will use that fingerprint to identify that file. And uh, I will tell you a little bit more about the Blob Store in, in, in another slide uh, coming up. But we will basically check for each file. So we make a head request to the Blob Store. And the Blob Store tells us, yeah, 200, I have the file, or 404, I don't know that file. And for the files that I'm currently missing, the cloud controller is going to assemble a list of missing fingerprints and passes that on or back on to the CLI. And now the CLI knows what files need to be uploaded. So we'll take all these files, we'll zip them up, and we'll upload them to the cloud controller. Um, in the second put request here. And as part of that put request, it also sends along like the, the global list of fingerprints. So now the cloud controller knows what files the app consists of, and it knows what are the new files and what are the files that it already has in the cache. So it gets the files it already has cached from the Blob Store, and it stores the new files it just got to the Blob Store because we want to reuse them in future requests, right? And at the end of that process, at the end of the two loops, um, it sends back a 201 to the CLI, which now can go on, do whatever it needs to do, right? And um, in an asynchronous way, using a background job, it will actually take all of these files that your app consists of and assemble what we call a package. And that package is then also being uploaded to the Blob Store. And why do we do that? Why, why do we keep that cache and then also a package? Well, that package is actually the piece that um, resembles your app. That piece is then later being downloaded by either the DA or Diego when you want to stage and start your app. Because we need those files. And we need to compile them using the build pack or build them to um, yeah, come up with a droplet that we then can run. So that's basically the flow. So now you have like an idea of like one particular example of where we use bits. And this new bit service deals with these bits. But before I tell you more about the bit service, let's take a look at um, what this blob store component on the right side actually means, what that is. And that highly depends on your deployment of Cloud Foundry, right? So you might either have a particular Bosch job, a VM in your deployment, where you store these files. And you store them on a local disk there. That's what we mean with local disk here. So you store them on a VM in your deployment. Uh, while that is feasible, and some people do that, it's maybe not the most scalable solution out there, right? And that's why more often you will see um, people use external object stores, something like AWS S3 or OpenStack Swift. And there are many more options. And the reason we can support and, and provide you all these options for the object stores is because we use this little uh, library called FOG, F-O-G, FOG, cloud, I don't know who came up with that. But um, actually, that is kind of like an abstraction layer that um, abstracts the APIs for all these blob stores. And that's why we can offer that, right? That's why we can give you support for S3 versus OpenStack. Uh, I think Mark later, um, my colleague from IBM, will tell you a little bit more about Fog. Um, but right now, it's, it's important to know that the, the blob stores, it's most likely something external. All right. So, now I told you how we use app and what the flow looks like and where we store them. You might still wonder, what is this bit service then? Because that's like what we do nowadays, right? Without the bit service. Um, well, at its core, this bit service thing is a new component in your deployment. Um, it's a new boss job, or you might want to look at it as a new service, right? That's why it's called bit service. And it encapsulates all the bits related functionalities in one piece, in one new component. Uh, and um, 
it will do things like you know dealing with the with the uploads and the downloads of your app bits, your app resources, right? It will do the, the resource matching I told you about. It will handle packages, droplets, build packs, everything that basically needs to be uploaded and downloaded all the time. Um, and we want to encapsulate that into a new service. And to help you like form a picture of that thing, it's probably also good to know what it, this thing is not. So it's not a competitor to S3. It's not a competitor to OpenStack Swift. We are not building a new object store here, right? Rather, we are building something that abstracts. Um, and I told you about this fog thing. So why do we need another abstraction layer here? Well, this fog thing, first of all, it's a library. It's not like a, a service by itself. And also, it, it tries, fog tries to be very generic. What we want, though, is like we want something that's highly use case specific to our CF use case, Cloud Foundry use case. And we want, to, want this component to be streamlined and, and highly you know, performant for that stuff. And that's why we want to have this new service, right? So we, we are not trying to build a new object store and we are not trying to be generic here and give you an API that you can use for your app or whatever. Um, so that's that new service. And why do we need it? I mean, that stuff has been working for a couple of years now. Like, you can push apps now and, and everything works fine, right? You might ask, like, why do we need this new component? That's complexity. Well, um, at the core, the answer for that question is like that the cloud control is a bit of a monolith nowadays. It does a lot of things, and I told you before, like it keeps track of like all the entities in, in, in your CF world, so it keeps track of the data model, it serves the API, it handles the bits, and it does a lot of other things. And in the context of bits and blobs, the problem with that is it's mostly around uh, concurrency and scalability. So in order to understand that, you have to know that uh, the cloud controller itself is a Ruby app, and every request that comes in uh, will be handled by a separate thread. And that thread comes out of a thread pool. So it's a predefined pool and you cannot throw it. I mean, you have like X threads and that's it, right? Use them and use them wisely. Uh, the problem with these bits related requests is that they are potentially long running because you can imagine like uploading big files, downloading big files or like lots of files. That might take a while, right? And during that time, you're basically locking out other threads uh, or the other requests that, that you just cannot handle because you're out of threads during that time. And the only way right now to scale, or to, to scale out of that is like scale Cloud Controller, increase the instances, uh, the number of instances that you have for Cloud Controller. Um, so to increase the throughput for the Cloud Controller API uh, as, a, as a whole, we thought about like, hey, if you can take all these like potentially long running requests and deal with them on a, in a separate component, then we have like some leverage there and we can scale just that one particular component if we have a, have a bottleneck there and we can increase the overall throughput. So that's all about scalability and, and concurrency. That's really the main point here. But there are also obviously a couple of other advantages. One of them is like the cloud controller code is kind of complex because it does a lot of things. Uh, by splitting this out into a new service, having a separate code base, we hope to, um, you know, maintain that code a little bit easier, like incre increase maintainability, and also potentially allow like uh, parallel de de development tracks, sorry, on, on these two code bases. Um, and I think with that, um, I will hand over to Mark and he will tell you a little bit more about, you know, how we got to where we are today and where we are today. So now I'm going to take you now on how we approach the bit service and the challenges we faced while doing that. So right now the cloud controller handles five resources. Uh, three are entity related like droplets, packages, and build packs. And the other two are caches like the app bits cache, which was mentioned and also the build packs cache. We just picked one and started implementing it in a, in a separate service, a bit service, implementing all the rest verbs like put, post, get, and delete. It's not a full REST API, it's just these services, the bits handling in Cloud Foundry needs. Um, we put that, since it's implemented in Ruby, behind a web server, the Nginx, which is doing most of the raw bits handling in the flow. And as we had this up and running, um, after that we went into the cloud controller and basically changed it instead of going to its own um, Blobster implementation, now allow it to talk to the bit service instead and do all this bits handling um, through this new API 
we've implemented. And after we've, we had done that for one resource, we just repeated that for the next resource until we had done that for all five resources. Then we added more breaths, like we started with local file system and added support for S3, added support for OpenStack, and on the, on the right hand side you can see um, the part of our pipeline which is really um, testing the bit service against all um, three storage implementations in the separate lanes. It's just a different release we built there and tested against the real thing, and which is quite of nice having that also in a, in a small component where you can do um, this actual testing. And we did start um, with the most common use case in these days, like the V2 API of the cloud controller and the DEAs as compute um, implementation. And then we moved on to um, do the same thing for Diego, where there are some internal endpoints differ. And then we also covered in the past weeks um, V3, which was kind of interesting at um, some points because it's not completely done yet, but we got it covered. So when we look at the bits flow and how the bits flow in the example we had above from the CF push, today the client uploads the bits to the CC, which is what you see on the top. And if you have your storage backend in a production deployment in S3, CC will relay all the bits to the actual blob store, upload that again to S3, and when that's done, it will let the CLI know, well, we're done. And if you look at um, the bottom of the chart for tomorrow, we will simply remove CC out of that flow. So the CLI or any other internal client like the DA or Diego will talk directly to the bit service, which can be scaled, as Steve said, independently. And if you have a large deployment with one million customers on, on it and you have a lot of uploads and downloads and everything going on, you can just scale these and don't need to scale your cloud controller for the actual um, bits handling. The only reason why the CC is still in that picture because after the upload is done, we'll still have to let the CC know, well, the file is there, that's where you can find it. And right now, with the development we're doing, we're kind of um, in the middle, which is temporary, where the CC and the bit service is in. So what we have right now is like the CC still receives all the uploads and then relaying that to the bit service and then the bit service really relaying that to the storage implementation um, in the blob store. This is kind of making sure we're really covering all the passes, but that will go away. We're not adding something in the flow in between. It's just for the end states that we can bypass that. So challenges we faced. Um, I think the biggest challenge was um, FOC or is FOC because um, on the one hand it's a library which makes a lot of things when dealing with the storage backends easier. But on the other hand it has a lot of implementations for different storage providers and that implementation, how you can configure that right now is leaked outside um, in the deployment manifest and you can for your storage implementation put in whatever you want there. So for us as a team, when we simply want to answer the question, what storage backend implementations do we need to cover? We can't answer that question today because everyone can pick what he wants. Or the question, um, what features of those storage backends do we need to support or do we need to cover in our tests? We can't answer that because today everyone can use whatever is there on, in terms of knob and configuration. And this missing abstraction, what Cloud Foundry as itself supports, that's a real um, challenge for testing or for providing um, um, feature equality. And that's, I guess, that's what's supposed to go away. Then another thing was like, there is for blobs, not really a carved out API. So some endpoints are visible on, on the cloud controller and some other things for the bits handling which now get visible on the bit service are not really 
um, available as API on, on the cloud controller. For instance, um, if you delete an app, it will go and delete also the package, the droplet, but that's nothing which is outside surface on the API today. That's only in the, in the cloud controller code, and this hidden API will become um, surfaced with a, with a bit service. And also one thing which was quite interesting there is that all of the five resources, um, they're handled differently, like the key generation for the resources. Some are only SHAs, some, all, some are SHAs of other entities and appended a stack name or other things. So everything is, is, is different there. There's no clear structure um, today. Um, another real challenge was while we were doing that, also the cloud control, the copy team was continuing to work. And for instance, they re replaced the local blob store NFS implementation um, with WebDAV, which on the one hand was a really cool thing what they did there because they also cleaned up some code and introduced some abstraction like blob standards and things like that. But we also needed to catch up with all um, the web dev changes and port our code forward to that. So that was challenging, so working on the same thing from two different angles. And I think the last but uh, also biggest challenge was in the state we're right now, we don't want to break um, any contracts or on any any other components. We just want to keep it working. So we're not doing any changes to um, the CLI or Jaeger or anything to, to make it more efficient or to clean things up. But that may may come as soon as we're, we're done with the bit service and it is integrated in the cloud controller. So we really try to avoid any breaking changes to existing components so far. And with that, I'll hand it back to Simon to take you through the rest. Okay, so um, let me try to do the last part of the presentation uh, telling you what did we learn, right? So there are basically two things that, that we learned. So the first one is kind of like a cultural aspect, which is, uh, which is something that we learned from working together. And, and the, the interesting piece, uh, the most interesting piece about this is, is uh, company cultures are quite different, and it, in reality, being probably one of the <laughs> one of the projects where this we tried to do this for the first time for real, um, we had a lot of friction in the beginning about adjusting uh, our working modes to to get going. It, it, that took a while. So everybody who would like to, it, it's not impossible to overcome, but it, it really you need to you need to work through a bunch of things uh, to ad adopt the the style of working uh, and and get everything up and running um, the second really interesting lesson that we learned is um, since we're located in Germany and in the UK um, we are basically do remote pairing quite a lot of the time um, so we have um, most of the time, someone from Germany is pairing with someone in the UK, and of course there are days where people are pairing locally, but, but most of the time we actually uh, do remote pairing. Um, it's a high degree, and it actually can work. So whoever has been asking whether this is a feasible thing, it, it actually is. It's, I didn't think it in the beginning, but it worked out not so bad. And, and the third thing is, I mean, given that we are in Europe and the large part of the Cloud Foundry team is sitting here in San Francisco, we always have to bridge like nine hours time difference, which is making any synchronization that's required sometimes really hard. But that, that worked out as well. So coming to the technical side of things, um, I think the main lesson that we learned is uh, you can split the CC into microservices. I think that's that's the thing to take away from 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 the from this effort or from this uh, work that we've been doing. Um, it is hard, though. It's not it's not it's not not easy because uh, first and foremost, if you try to do an effort like we did, you have to each of the resources works differently, um, and and particularly around the V2 API. Uh, the functionality is really distributed across many places because m a lot of that stuff has been a little bit organically grown and you have to rip out things where you don't think you want to rip out things. Um, and we had a discussion in one of the retros that, that said if we would have been, 
if we would have done that on re3 it would have probably been easier because it would have been a much cleaner rest model but the f matter of fact we needed to do it on v2 so we had to go the hard we had to learn that the hard way so let me quickly explain to you how does the bit service now affect you and how does it help you it's kind of like the slide that probably many of you have been waiting for so Let's start that if you are a Cloud Foundry operator, so you're running your own Cloud Foundry instance today, um, how would the bit service help you? So the first thing is um, it would help you because you would be able to independently scale the Cloud Controller and the bit service for these types of operations and thereby um, uh, be able to uh, you know, operate your Cloud Foundry in a different way. Um, the problem that you're going to have is that there's going to be one more or n more VMs that you need to take care of. You need to monitor them and, and so on and so forth. So that's what you buy by getting this additional flexibility. Um, and for everybody out there who's using anything else than S3 or Swift as the actual backend, um, please come to me and talk to me. <laughs> uh, the reason why I say this is um, we are in the process of maybe removing fog uh, from the bit service configuration, um, but we don't want to break anybody. So uh, we would like to have S3 or Swift as the, as, as the supported backends, and we might want, to be, might want to add one or two others, but please talk to me if you, if you haven't, if you have using anything else than S3 or Swift as your, as your backend. If you are an application developer, um, you're hopefully going to see the existence of a bit service by the cloud controller getting more responsive because we're going to offload all the uh, time-consuming um, um, bits operations into its own service. Um, and that will result in, in more efficient handling of the bits, which hopefully you'll see as faster push times, faster uploads, uh, those, that sort of thing. Um, and if you are a Cloud Foundry developer, so you're working on any other of the Cloud Foundry components, um, you are finally getting a clean API uh, to code against all your bit service operations. So when you want to upload, download the package, uh, thinking of Diego, thinking of um, any other components, uh, that's something that you, that you get out of this. What are the next things? What are the things that we're planning to do next? So the first uh, and immediate next step now is we're going to release the bit service uh, and hopefully make it a default in the CF release. Um, so we are working on, currently the incubation is working on a private fork, um, but we are clo very close to merging that fork back into the, into the, um, into the CF release itself. Um, we have to do a little bit more things, uh, like a little bit more operational statistics and, and, a, and a bunch of uh, chores on housekeeping uh, before, we can, before we finally think we're happy, but, but that, that's uh, also one of the things that we want to add. Uh, we'd like to become independent of FOG, like I just said, um, which who might affect one or the other of you, so please come and see me if you are affected by this. Um, then we would like to implement a more efficient resource matching. Uh, there have been two spikes or two prototypes being done, one for Java applications and one for, for, um, for other applications, and we have a, a bunch of additional th thoughts on how we can make resource matching more efficient. So that's certainly something that will give additional performance gains. Um, and we'd like to, to tackle that as well. Um, then we would like to probably re-implement the bit service in Golang, um, just because of also performance reasons. And there was one request already by the community asking whether we could add additional functionalities like backing up the whole blob store in one shot. So that's certainly something to think about. Um, and with that, I'm going to go over to the Q&A. Um, and maybe some of you or one of you has any other ideas to talk about. The presentation will be downloadable and it has a bunch of links uh, to the project if you want to take a look at it. So you, wanna, you can look at the, uh, at the CI pipeline. You are able to look at Tracker um, and at Git um, if you want to take a look at the code. With that, thank you very much for your attention. Um, and the floor is open for question, if there are any. No, we haven't. <laughs> so so the, the short answer is no, we haven't. Um, 
And the reason is because today a Docker image is transparent to the cloud controller. So what, what would be the use case when you want to expose it directly? I mean, if you, if, you compile it into, if you compile it into a droplet at the end of the day or something, um, we could think about doing something like that. It's a good, good idea. More questions? Uh, we have been hoping that we can do most of it through redirects um, so that the, that the CLI will just go to the CC and the CC will send a redirect. Um, but that might not be uh, the case in every, uh, that might not be the case for all cases. So yes, we are, I started discussing with, uh, discussions with DS on changing the CLI. Curious why, uh, Oh, it isn't on. Okay. Uh, I'm curious why Bits was implemented as a new VM versus a CF system app. Scalability. Well, it's all platform components. Um, it lives in Bosch and is a service which is Bosch deployed. You can co-locate it on, on VMs. It doesn't have to be on its own VM, but it's a platform service, so it lives in Bosch or not an app. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Uh, more people are coming in, so you're all late. Um, <laughs> <laughs>